Hey, this is Jimmy with Cascade Components. Today we're going to talk a little bit about why the uh, the links are useful in tuning for bottom out resistance and small bump sensitivity and give just a little bit more of an in-depth look at the theory behind the links. So to start off, I guess we'll do a little, uh, little bit of physics 101. Um, common misconception that we, we see people having with bottom out resistance is that it's the amount of force that the shock is exerting through the linkage at the wheel at bottom out. Now, this is not the case, however. It's a conservation of energy problem. The bottom out resistance is the total amount of energy that your shock stores and dissipates over the extent of its travel. The easiest example of bottom out resistance to visualize is a flat drop with a flat landing. Standing on top of that drop, your bottom out resistance needs to be equal to the amount of potential energy that you have on top of the drop. That potential energy is equal to your mass times gravity times height. So when we're talking bottom out resistance in a drop to flat scenario, what we're talking is converting that potential energy that you have to a combination of energy dissipated through the damper and energy stored in the spring. So when you're looking to increase the bottom out resistance of your bike, you're left two options. You can increase the amount of damping that you're running, or you can increase the amount of energy stored in the spring. Now, a lot of people don't want to touch their damping settings because they have it exactly where they want it. You don't want to increase the amount of compression damping because you, you may find that it no longer feels good in a specific area that you had it you know, completely dialed previously. So that's, that's where our, our links come in. Now, if you overspring a bike with the stock link, yes, that does increase the amount of bottom out resistance because you're increasing the amount of energy stored in the spring. However, what you've done is significantly decrease the amount of sag that your bike has. Now, when you decrease the amount of sag dramatically like that, the rear wheel is no longer able to track in the divots as well. So you end up with this really chattery feeling where it doesn't, doesn't want to maintain traction and just doesn't want to track through rougher terrain. And when you add the link into the equation, you're able to run your, your spring stiffer so that you get that increased bottom out resistance, you know, that's storing more energy in the spring incurs without negatively impacting the amount of sag that you're running at the rear wheel. It lets you have a rear wheel sag set up where it'll, it'll track well over indentations in the trail. Uh, it'll have good bottom out resistance due to the increased amount of energy that you're storing at the spring at full compression. And you're still leaving your damping set up you know, in a, a spot that you, you know is completely dialed. You, you don't have to think about, oh, you know, I'm, I'm reaching down to add, you know, a handful of clicks of low speed compression for this particular scenario. And, you know, I, I, I'm gonna do it because I need it, but at the same time, I know it's not gonna feel quite as good over, you know, choppy roots or washboard. Um, so we talked about bottom out resistance off of flat drops. Now uh, I'm gonna talk just a little bit about bottom out resistance on successive hits. Uh, this is a slightly more nuanced scenario, but uh, a little bit about why the link is beneficial there. So when you look at a more progressive link versus a more linear link, um, not only is that, that leverage ratio that we're talking about, it's actually, uh, it's also motion ratios. So a more progressive link will move will move the wheel more at the top of its travel for a given amount of shock stroke than it will at the bottom of its travel compared to a less progressive link. Uh, this is why a lot of our links we actually recommend a little bit below 30% sag. It's because 30% sag at the wheel is less than 30% sag at the shock. So having that um, increased amount of shock stroke available from the sag point, uh, that, that alone actually increases the bottom out resistance for successive impacts. Now, when you, you factor in the increased spring rate as well, which as we went over before, doesn't that doesn't impact the bike's ability to track due to the changes in the leverage curve, you get even more bottom out resistance for successive hits. So there's a little look into how our link will, you know, help you improve the setup of your suspension when it comes to bottom out resistance, small bump sensitivity, 
and ability to track through rough terrain. For more details, you can look up our products on cascadecomponents.bike. Thanks. Have a great day.